Hi, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and I'm here with Dave Brown, director, producer, Morehouse man. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, I had to sneak that in there. You know, hey, hey, you know what Morehouse man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I went to school in the AUC, so I, already, I knew I had to say it. Oh, you, you went to school in the AUC? I, I did. I went to Clark Atlanta. Yes, I okay, did. Okay, all right, yo. Yeah, so I, say, I, I know you don't meet a Morehouse man and not say that they're Morehouse man. <laughs> You know, I, I got I got love for Clark because, you know, at the end of the day, I had to do my film, you know, back then when I was at Morehouse, they didn't have right. the they film did the cross from, Yep, that's right. Yeah. Because, um, you know, that's that's correct. A lot of the kids that um, were at uh, Morehouse and Spelman that were doing MassCom would come over and, into our department. I, I did on um, MassCom as well. I had to do a short film before I graduated. And mm -hmm. and Dr. Eichenberg was one of the ones that, we you know, that that charged all the, you know, made it, you know, mm. gave us that, that confidence in being filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So that's a Dr. Eicherberger. Um, I was more so, I was so focused on radio at the time. I was okay. like, I want to be on the radio and I don't even care. I just want to just roll out of bed and start talking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you that, I hear that voice. You got that radio voice though. I hear that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but listen, you didn't even let me say your name. So I was just wanted to, to just completely actually just really introduce you because you're, you're yeah. a man of many hats. And I think it's really important that people know that. And I think it's also very interesting. Um, again, I'm here with Dave Brown. Um, like I said, he's the director and producer, um, a director and producer, and he is a Morehouse man, but he's also the founder of the Indie Night Film Festival. So yeah. that's a lot of things. There's more to him, of course, but I also just want to say thank you, Dave, for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> it no, no, no problem. At all. Where, where's your hometown? Um, I'm from, well, I was born in Philly, then my parents moved to San Francisco. So I was raised oh. in San Francisco and, and and went to high school there, played basketball in high school, and then went, mm. uh, went to Morehouse, played basketball at Morehouse, and, and the film student, and then after I moved to LA. So I've been in LA for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. You'd uh, pretty much consider yourself, like I guess maybe you're like really a true Los An Angelino. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because I've been here for so <laughs> long now. I mean, you know, when you, Look, when, when you start buying property here, I think that's when you got to say, okay. This is <laughs> no, no, no. Look, look, that's the flex, though, because the thing is, like, when you can buy property, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> it, it can be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it sure can. It sure can. That's great. But I think that one of the most interesting things about you, too, is that you have some really, really strong um, friendships. Um, with yeah. people that are are really really connected in the industry and that are you know huge names themselves, you know I'm not just trying to like throw this out there like that, but I mean the fact that you can call um, somebody like uh, like Jamie Fox um, mm -hmm. or Morris Chestnut, you know friends and confidants. I mean, what does it? I mean, what is it about you that you're able to maintain those kind of friendships? Because especially in a town like that, a lot of people are very guarded, but right. you maintain these relationships. How is that? What what is that about you? Well, you know, I, I think for me. Um it goes, it goes back. It goes back to when everybody was just coming in the game, you know, I've been in the game for over 30 years. And mm -hmm. so, you know, um, you know, to start off with Morris, you know, uh, Morris is the only person I knew before I moved to LA. Like I knew him in LA. And um, I remember when I was graduating from college as a film student, I was like in, in film at the eight, I was like, yo, I'm going to either go to New York or I'm going to go mm -hmm. to LA. And so then, you know, when I reached out to Morris, it was like, yo, bro, what should I do? What should I do? He said, Dave, I'll be honest with you. You need to be that fish. He said, if you're going to go do theater, go to New York. Right. But if you want to do TV and film, and you, you got to be that fish in the big pond with all the other fishes, so you got to come to LA. And so mm -hmm. which one do you want to do? I said, man, I got to do, I'm going to do film and TV. And he's like, well, come to LA. So mm -hmm. he was uh, my, I, I say, my, 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 my high beams in the mm -hmm. business, should I say, because, you know, he was just, you know, it was awful boys in the hood, you know, his his career and everything started taking off, but he was the one, you know, who educated me on on the do's and the don'ts and what not mm -hmm. to do. And he was on a show called Out All Night when I came I remember to that LA. show, yep. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. Patti LaBelle, Dwayne Martin, mm -hmm. Vivica Fox. I've met all these all these people back in the day. They were the mm -hmm. first, like my first friends when I, when I got to LA, because, you know, Morris was on Out All Night. And so um, just learning from him, why, you know, how to stay relevant in the business. As you could say, you know, you, you look at Morris, Morris is a leading man, you know, and will always be a leading man and yes. will always work. And it goes mm -hmm. from not only his work ethics as far as an actor, but also for the fact that he's just a great person, a great mm. person. I'm saying he's a, you know, a great person. And he's not one of those when comes on the set 
And I've been there where he's like, you know, he talks to everybody, whether the person is the grip, the person that's getting coffee, but no matter what it is, mm. it's how you doing. He's that. And that's how it should be on a set. And mm. I've been blessed to be around A-listers mm -hmm. uh, as Fox and, and Morris, you know, to be able to see how they hold court on a set to mm. where it starts at the top. Mm -hmm. And if the top is bad, then everything just just doesn't doesn't sit right. Mm -hmm. And so I've been blessed to have these guys in my life, and and you know, uh, uh, they they've been nothing but you know these are my brothers, and and you know, uh, Fox I've known for years back, you know, after he he just finished Living Color, you know, and it was crazy. Oh, wow. When Fox finished Living Color, you know, it's it's crazy how when you're not working, mm -hmm. you know, you you really see who your friends are. You know, uh, and, yeah, yeah, and I yeah. remember Fox leaving and moving to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know, he would always say that, you know, he had the answer machine would go from uh, 60 messages, uh, 40, uh, oh, wow. 15, five, you know, and I was part of those five that always stayed in contact and was like, bro, how you doing? You know, what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. and so we we've been friends for a long time. You know, um, I was doing this movie called. Um, the Earl uh, Manigault uh, mm -hmm. Rebound. It was uh, directed by Eric LaSalle right when he left ER. That was his first directing debut with Don mm -hmm. Cheeto, Loretta Devine. I mean, I worked with some of the greats that was on that film. And so at that time, I was doing a film called Rebound, the Earl Manigault story, and he was doing a movie called Booty Call. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shooting that in Toronto. We were shooting that in Toronto. And I remember seeing him across the street. I'm like, walking down the street, I'm like, yo, Fox, what's up? He's like, hey, what's going on? I said, I'm here for four and a half months. He said, I'm here for four months. That was back in 95 where we started hanging and kicking it. And uh, and it was it was it was, it was really um, a pivotal moment for me because, you know, going up to that time, he did the Jamie Foxx show and all that stuff. And, you know, I was around during all those times. And, and then um, I remember him saying when we got to the part where he says, I'm going to do this movie called Ray Charles. Mm. And that uh, it, it, I want you to come in this journey and see, and I was able to be there on that journey wow. to see him transform into Ray Charles. And and you gotta understand, uh, when that movie came out, you know, you watch him, you go, look at Fox, look at Fox. Mm -hmm. But then he started morphing into Ray Charles and you didn't mm -hmm. see Fox anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he did a great job. And then he said, uh, I remember him saying, you know, I think I get a chance to get a, an Oscar for this. So I want you oh, to be wow. able to experience it. So when you have a friend that that's, that's, that's close like that and say, hey, let me show you a part of the the part of Hollywood this that world. most people yeah. don't really get to, yeah, don't really get to experience. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, when you're going to these parties, when you're being nominated for an Oscar and wow, you see yeah. such such over here, you see all these greats there and you're like, yeah. wow. And in my mind, I'm like, Wow, that's 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 such a such that's and that's, right. that's you know, and to be around Oprah and all them that kind of day, you know, it was it was it, it made you up your game and say, one day, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna learn and watch. Yeah. And so I was able to learn from Fox how what it took to be a leading man and and, and the things you got to do with his work ethics is is crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. As I say, I call I tell I, I say all the time. I said I'm gonna be honest that I was there to witness it all. Yo, nobody, he's a triple threat. Mm -hmm. He's a triple he threat. He can sing, yo. <laughs> yeah. Yo, it's sing, funny, no, and acting, but it's so funny because I always tell people this. I'm like, capably, when you think about the people that really are those kind of triple threats, there's very, very few in that number. Yeah. Obviously, Jamie Foxx, um, Queen Latifah. I mean, there's some people, but I mean, Jamie Foxx can really, really sing. Like, if he can, just can never decided to, yeah, if he just never decides to do any of these individual things he's so good at, like literally the singing is so good. The comedy is hilarious. Yeah. The acting is so, it's just interesting. He's, he's he's in a number of, like it's like a countable number of people that can do that. Yeah, and he was a young, <laughs> you gotta understand this. He's one of the youngest and mm. the only to be nominated for supporting and leading in mm. one year. Oh, I, I didn't even Oscar. realize that. I did not even realize Yeah, that. yeah, it was for Ray Charles and then Collateral. Mm -hmm. I did not even he realize got that. got nominated for Collateral. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you look at that and you go, okay, here, when I look at his, uh, his, his, his 
all his accolades and all his awards. He has every award that you can think of except for a Tony. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about all the way across from singing, from the Grammys, for everything. Yeah. And I'm like, Fox, what is it like? He says, Dave Brown. I, I, I don't feel, because you know, when you, when you feel like you got all that, you yeah. feel like it, you, you've done it all. But he says, I'm not done. I'm not done. Ambitious people are just different. Like, it's just, yeah, yeah. when you're around somebody like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, they never, you know, some and people so, just are like, all right, it's, I'm done. No, 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 no. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I learned to watch how acting, him as a producer and mm -hmm. producing, and now, you know, um, you know, we have the company, you know, Foxhole Productions, and we're doing so much stuff that that we're working in, and, and, and it's, it's great. We got a great amount of films that's coming out. And he's mm -hmm. in them, and he's also producing them at the same time. So that our company is okay. doing so. It's 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 going great, and this is where we tied it all into Indie Night Film Festival as well, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of talent out there. They just don't know how to get into Hollywood, and so. I, I wanted to ask you about that because I think that just even like talking about the experiences that you've had, um, it'd be very easy for you to even just focus on yourself just very directly and specifically. You, you have the support of people that do love and care about you where they're like, you know, like you the bro, like, you know, what do you need? I and mean, I'm sure it's, it's very, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's just you have those kinds of um, ties that it would be easier, let's say, for you to do that. I'm always curious about the kind of person that decides to pour into other people. Like, so it's very easy for you to, to focus on you, but to, to create this film festival and like weekly, you know, and to make mm -hmm. sure that these people are being able to mingle with these A-listers or just different people that like movers and shakers in Hollywood and just starting out, yeah. like what made you decide that this was very, very important to do? Well, let me tell you something. It, it's it's mm -hmm. crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to this. Uh, you can't tell a Morehouse man you can't do something. <laughs> exactly. That, 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 hey, hey, I'm going to start by that right now. And, yeah. you know, and because, you know, when I said that I was going to do a weekly film festival, I'll never forget. They told me, they said, it, it, that'll never work. I said, why right. do you say that? Of course. Mm -hmm. They said, because a, a film festival is it, once a year. You'll never have enough films. And I'm like, I said, wait a minute, wait, let me get this straight. You, 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 because I'm telling you that I'm going to do a weekly film festival, you'll tell me I'll never have a film. I said, there's so many films out there, and people don't have a place to show it. That's exactly and right. so it goes back to where I remember doing, there's a place called, there's this, this, this event called Dope Boy Dozen. Mm -hmm. And everybody used to come and sit in this room. And it was all the greats, the Eric LaSalle's, all everybody. Was, I mean, the Dodge, everybody in Hollywood was there. Mm -hmm. And we would sit on beanbags. Mm -hmm. And it was real to real. And they used to put a screen up and you sit there and watch everybody's film. Mm -hmm. And Eugene Wilson, yeah, Eugene Williams is the one who did it and he passed away and it was a void. Nobody picked it up. And so I came along and I said, I remember this and I think this is something that needs to be done. He used to do that only once, once in here and there, but I switched it up and said, I'm going to do it weekly. And when they told me that a weekly film festival never work, I said, no, no, you just like my idea. Yeah. And I'm gonna do it anyway. So whenever somebody I, tells you, I, I think like that too. Hmm. Yeah. When somebody tells you it won't work, you're like, no, oh, no, no, it's going to work. And so now I just finished my 10th year. I'm starting my 11th year this, wow. this Saturday, January 14th. And you mm. know, my motto is this, is why should you have to wait once a year to be seen and miss all this work in between? And we know in mm. Hollywood, they always ask, they say, what's the last thing you've done? You say, well, I did a movie two weeks ago, but it won't come out to next year. Nobody wants to wait that long to be seen. So right. at Indie Night, I'm giving you an opportunity to show your short films, your web series, your trailers, your documentaries, and your full features. And I'm up weekly. The only time That's I'm down- great. So it doesn't have to necessarily be the entire full feature film. Right. Yeah, I, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. I showed the, I showed the entire full uh, feature film. I give, I because what I do is I plan it according to the time. So I may have two short films, and then the, and I say now we're going into the main event, which is a full feature, and we're gonna mm -hmm. sit and watch this feature film. And so I want everybody to know that it, it's a community for indie night for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one, I believe in no color lines because when I believe right. in art, there is no color. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going to create, it's going to be black, white, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. Asian, it's it's all about the art. And what I always say, and then one of my friends told me one day, he said, you know what's wrong, Dave? You know what's wrong with people in general? We all want to network up instead mm. of wanting to network up. Mm -hmm. And everybody is right here next to us. If we take everybody around here and say, so what do you do? Okay, you do that? Okay, and what do you do? And you, and you formulate and 
build something great. Mm -hmm. And this is what we try to do in, at, at Indie Night is talk about, I bring people in to talk about what it is that they went through so that you understand as a filmmaker, as a director, I'll bring a director, have a director come talk as an actor, as a writer, as a producer, mm -hmm. because we need to know the blueprint of what everybody else has done yeah, and be able to sit down and say, okay, I learn and watch people and I say, I'm watching how not to be. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's important. Wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, so that's important. Can... No, I was just going to say, because I think that a lot of times too, like what may seem like an overnight success is just not that at all. Like you talk about the right. work that Jamie's put into, right? And it's like, these are people that have worked a very long time that are continuously yeah. working on their craft. And you say, even with like someone like Jamie, the example you used where he's got pretty much every single award you can think of. You're like, it's like only a Tony would be left. You know, he hits the stage, you yes. get that too, you know? <laughs> but yeah. I mean, but the fact that someone like that is still like working towards achieving something or more of, of a goal and they just don't stop. But again, to your point, yeah. you don't, it doesn't happen just because, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't happen just because, and, and, you know, it's, it's a, it's anything in life, what you put into it is what you'll get out of it. But if you want yes. the success, because you want, if you want to be in the business because you want to do it for money, then you're in the wrong business. Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know one actor that shot from boom to boom. Oh, I can say, I know one, I know one person that shot from boom to boom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and that was Jennifer Hudson. Mm -hmm. And I know that because when we did dream girls, I was there when we did it. Mm, we did mm -hmm, Dream Girl. Mm -hmm. I watched. Jennifer was was a, 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 a woman that came from what? American Idol. Yeah. She was yeah. singing. She was mm -hmm. singing. And just so happened that when they came across this film called Dream Girls, she came and she blew the house down with a song and with her performance. And so yeah. you got to understand, you know, most actors will be like, dang, she went from here straight to the top where people have been trying to get to for years. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the great thing about Jennifer is that she understood that I'm at the top where everybody wanted to go, but it's about maintaining and that's staying. Right. That's right. Staying there. And that's what she was able to do and do certain things and do other, other, other acting jobs. So I commend her for that, you know, mm -hmm. because it's hard. It's hard. And, you know, um, Fox talks about this whole thing about altitude. Mm -hmm. Some people can't handle it. Some yeah. some people can't be up there high, and, yeah. and, and 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 get that fame and know how to act. Yeah. So, what I try to do is give everybody that opportunity of understanding the levels of what it takes to make it in Hollywood. And right. when you have somebody, Ruth Carter, who after she won her Oscar, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that next weekend, and and mm -hmm. talk to Robbie Reed, who was I don't know if you know who Robbie Reed is but she's the greatest casting director ever. Mm. She's the one that founded Halle Berry, Jamie Foxx, Denzel. She's the one, and doesn't get the credit that she should get. Right. And, I, and I believe that, you know, she's over now, she's over, she's an executive over at BET. So she's over all the TV shows at mm. BET. She's the head of casting for all the shows, but you know, she deserved wow. that job because she's mm. an iconic person. She comes once a month to Indie Night looking for talent and and she, she but even for you to say away. that, someone with uh -huh. the, someone with um, with uh, with those accolades and someone that has accomplished that much that's still coming to an indie night, like you see, like how important that is. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's it's really important because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you know, she knows how to find a diamond in the rough. Right, and, and, exactly. You know, and and she's not gonna stop giving everybody that opportunity. When I say she, and that's, and she's my sister. Cause you know, she's like, my, you know, I, I'm my sister. Like I've known Robbie for so many years, but you, mm -hmm. if you look at her portfolio, she goes all the way mm -hmm. back to uh, In Living Color. She goes back to all the, the films as you can think of. And, and she did all the Spike Lee's movies, you know, wow, okay. and did nights, you know, I mean, come on, she's an iconic person. So I I'm thankful to have, uh, a, a great cast and director as herself, you know, yeah. and they would come out and, and, and give us the opportunity to give everybody to be seen, those actors that need love. And, you know, and what I do is this, once everybody's film is shown, mm -hmm. I have, I have everybody, uh, you know, Q Nice, which is uh, my host. I have everybody mm -hmm. come down and Q interviews them and talks about their journey in making that film, which is a great thing. And so uh, it's, it's going to be a great thing. And, 
And I don't know if, if you heard about it, but I'm taking Indy Night on the road. I did not and know so, that. That's that's a great announcement. <laughs> I, I'm taking Indy Night on the road. I'll be doing it this okay. summer. Uh, uh, it's going to be, I'm doing Miami, Atlanta, D.C., Chicago, New York, uh, Dallas, San, uh, San Francisco, and a couple of other cities. And I'm doing it once a month in these cities. And I'm oh, going to great. be the mayor for films, mm -hmm. which mm. means he will become a celebrity in their yeah. city. And That's then the great. ones that are great, I bring them to Hollywood and stay attached to them and see if we can get these people some deals made. Uh, because yeah. it's a lot of talent there. They just don't know how to get into Hollywood. And so- are they, Or they can that. get to Hollywood. And the fact that you're coming right. to them, because it's not like, you know, if you live in a Chicago, it doesn't mean that you're not capable of, you know, making and producing a great film. But like you said, they don't have right. the access. So that's, a, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. And then I'll have Morris Chestnut will be hosting it. You see that? So, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be great. So, you know, you, know, you, get, you, get, the, you get to phone a friend, like. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be a great thing. I'll have Morris hosting it and then, uh, 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 co-hosting with Q will be next to him, uh, you know, mm -hmm. doing the interview. So it'll be great. It'll be a great situation. But, you know, it, it's time to expand and reach out to those those filmmakers because you can imagine just coming to L.A. You just can't walk right. in office and say, here, here's my script. Or here's my movie. Or, uh, mm -hmm. hi, I'm an actor. How can I get and, in? And, and, and everybody's know? doing it. So it's like, okay, so what almost? Yeah, it's true. Right. It's true. Right. So this is something we're opening up for 2023 and, and starting it on a on a big foot, but then also, you know, this weekend, uh, this will be the first weekend back. And, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, we're going to have a, a great, uh, celebrity guest that's, that's coming down. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's, uh, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen, um, um, oh my God, uh, Rob, you know, who Rob Morgan is right. I'm not sure if I know who that is. I'm not going to lie to you. He was in just <laughs> Mercy. Everybody. <laughs> have you seen just Rob Mercy? Morgan. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, Fox, Fox did Just Mercy. Okay. Michael B. Jordan. And Rob okay, Morgan was the one. He was on Death Row, and he was the one about the, he, he's done a lot of, he's done a lot of movies, but he's coming down this mm -hmm. week. Rob Morgan is, is, is a great actor who is okay. going to talk about, you know, I was, you said actors has been in the game for a long time, and now they're getting, the, you know, the, 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 yeah. the, 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 the just the due that they should have been given. That's and great. so he's going to come talk about that this week at Indy Night mm -hmm. at the TCL Chinese Theater. At the TCL Chinese Theater. And I'm, I definitely am going to make sure that I post this before the event so we can get more eyes on it. I, I definitely want to do that. And I, and I know that you know you have to run and we've had a great discussion. I've learned a lot and it was so nice meeting you, Dave, but I have to ask you this question because I would sure. just be so upset if I didn't. You need to tell me about this $75 for crystal water. What is going on? How did you get people to pay oh, for that? Oh, man. <laughs> Whose huh? idea was this? <laughs> you know, it, it was crazy. You know, my partners, uh, <laughs> Kevin Boyd and Lewis Williams back then, you know, it was, we. you think about this. Okay. If, people think water is the same and water is not. And water is different. Right. And so we, we had an award-winning water uh, line, you know, with the bling. And, and and we we put Swarovski crystals on the bottles. It was crazy because what we were doing was um, they were like, well, it, it markets to a certain clientele, right. you know. Yeah, sure. Where you know if if you don't drink but you want to look stylish when you're drinking, you know, if you got a bottle of, of Bling H two O in your hand, yo, it's gonna <laughs> be great. And yeah. so what I did was, you know, Tao in Vegas, I brought it to them and they were like, oh, this would be great. Can we put mm -hmm. towel and limited edition on the bottom of it? I mm -hmm. said, yes, we can. Mm -hmm. And they started selling it for $75 a bottle. At the Mirage, they were selling it for $100 at a bottle because wow. it, 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 was a, it was a perception of bottle service is the amount of bottles that's on the table is what makes you look like you were you know, really doing something. So right, what right, we right. did was we, put, we would have all the different colors of the bottles. So then when it ended up happening, girls would be like, Oh, I like this bottle. And they take the bottle home. Now it becomes a collector item. Right, 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 right. So every time I run into people, they say, I still have my bottle of Bling Ace 2 <laughs> sitting right over <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> I was like, if I don't ask so, this man this, I'm going to, ooh, I'm going to be so mad at myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've, no, I've, was, yeah, I've, I've done water and everything. And we got so much going on right now because uh, Jamie Foxx, we have a company where our glasses uh, pre revoke. Um, mm -hmm. We have the um, BSB, brown sugar bourbon, 
that's mm. out now. So, and that's it's crazy because uh, um, we had that in all the um, with the wings and stuff with the the wings uh, and and barbecue wings at um, mm. TGI Fridays. So all oh, the TGI wow. Fridays they use the alcohol as as this for the seasoning for the for the wings and and the barbecue sauce and you got the drink menu they got the foxy you know the drinks were made out of foxes names and stuff that the mixtures and everything with it That's so incredible. we've been we've been really knocking at it this 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 mm -hmm. year I, I love so. speaking to people with an entrepreneurial spirit because it's like it's never just like one note you guys always are yeah. working on like 15 different things or more, but like giving every single thing 100%. It's just a different type of mindset and a different type of person. You know, a lot of us yeah. kind of like, yo, I mean, we struggle to do nine to fives, you know, and y'all are just like, do you ever sleep? <laughs> hey, they say the ones that stay awake, you know, and the ones that still, you know, you got to keep pushing. And the one yeah. thing I was, I was taught is like, hey, whenever you want it, you got to go get it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I find that very inspirational. Now, I don't know if I have, you know, if I can operate on <laughs> on that percentage level, but it's, it's certainly very inspirational. I, I really, truly do appreciate talking to you. You you got me like ready to write some things down. Oh, I, hey, I, I, hey. I'm, I'm not, not. I'm in the manifest game because people have been putting me onto that. They're like, yo, you got to manifest things, right? And be intentional, write things down and you're going to accomplish them. I tell everybody, I said, you know, the number one killer is stress. Yeah. Stress takes over takes over the body, puts you six feet deep. And mm -hmm. if you just, yo, know, and for me is, is put, you know, God in my life and saying, Hey, mm -hmm. you take over this, but I don't like to stress over nothing. I'm like, mm -hmm. Hey, if there's a problem, let's just fix it. Let's just mm -hmm. fix it. There's nothing we can do. I'm not going to be down on it. Let's just, let's just move on in life because this mm -hmm. is what life is about. It's challenges. It's going to be thrown at you. So mm -hmm. how you handle them is how you're going to turn out to be. So mm -hmm. I, I always look forward you can do anything you want to do. You put your mind to it. You got it. Mm -hmm. Got that. Got that. So that that was a message. That was a word. Um, this is a very inspirational conversation. Um, once again, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com, and I'm here with Dave Brown, again, director, producer, and Morehouse man, <laughs> yeah. and the founder of the Indie Night Film Festival. Go ahead and just uh, let me know just uh, the the date and the time and the theater again. Um, it's so it's this Saturday, January 14th is mm -hmm. going to be at the TCL Chinese theater and you can go to Indie night, I N D I E N I G H T F F.com. You can, you know, get your, uh, get your tickets on there you can submit your films. Um, right. like I said, you, you submit your films and stuff to in LA or you can submit your films now for Atlanta. Cause like I said, we're coming to Atlanta mm -hmm. and, um, give you an opportunity to showcase your work and get it seen in front of everybody. And also, I forgot to tell you this, but we're also on, um, we, we have, you know, when COVID started, you know, everything shut down. So yeah. what I did was I built theaters on my website so that when we were in quarantine, Indy Night was still able to continue moving on. And it was oh, the greatest great. thing I could have. So it was because, like a virtual uh, Indy Night. Oh, exactly. that's a great idea. That's uh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. We still have that. And so what we're doing is, is a great thing because I'm getting movies from South Africa, from China, all mm. over the world. When I, and so this is what we like to create. If people can't make it, they send the films in. I can still send it on the website and still post it so everybody can still see their film uh, mm -hmm. on demand. And it's free. You know, it's just giving everybody the opportunity to see some great films and great exposure of writers, directors, actors, and producers. That, man, that's great, Dave. I, I really appreciate this. Just this is so like it's oh, this is great. This is really what it's very like community focused. And I really, I really appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, and I mean just good luck to everybody that's submitting your films um to the Indie Night Film Festival. And of course, as Dave said, you do not have to necessarily be in Hollywood. He's taking this show on the road as well. And of course, he's got the virtual property so that it, whether you're in shout out to my East Africa, you know, all my East African homies out there, you know, the Rwandese and the Tanzanians out there. If you want to submit something, go ahead and do that too. <laughs> but but thank and you, follow, thank you, Dave. <laughs> that? And then also follow, follow at, at Dave Brown USA. Yes. Yes, follow at Dave Brown. I'll put all of your socials on there as well. So follow at Dave Brown USA, guys, so you can stay connected. Dave Brown. Because, you know, it's so funny because we were talking about how Jamie was talking about you. would be like, Dave Brown. Are you one of those people that they give you, like, your whole name? <laughs> yeah. Like, but, Dave Brown. You know, when, they, when they say that, they go ask me, why you say your full name? I said, because if I ever called you on the phone, I'm going to say it's Dave. You're going to say, Dave who? Dave Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> but, that. <laughs> it's only one. 
That's no, that's hilarious. I appreciate you, Dave Brown. Thank you so much Thank for joining me, okay? Take care. That was a great conversation. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see more content like this on blackfilm.com, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell. <laughs>